In this 2D frame tutorial, I am going to demonstrate how to compare different framing methods while demonstrating various modeling techniques. First of all, we're going to sketch members using the graphical grid that allows us to align members to specific locations. You could change this grid at any time. Notice when I drew that last column, I drew it from top to bottom. That's generally a bad idea. You want to align your members so they all have consistent local axes. That will help you assign properties and interpret results later on. I'm going to select the base nodes here using the control key so that I can define pin supports. These are external supports on our structure. And you can see here by default connections between members, beams, and columns are rigid by default. By turning on the picture view we can see the actual cross sections a little bit better and we can see what shapes we have. So I'm going to change this to a steel frame from the default that I had set up as wood. So I'm going to pick a W14 column for both columns and a W18 beam. When you select a shape from the database, you also get a default material associated with that shape category. You can override that default material after changing the shape. You can change the material if you want to. We're going to stick with this A992 grade 50 steel. Okay, this isn't really a loading tutorial, but I'm going to quickly set up some loads just to demonstrate the frame behavior. So I'm going to switch to the dead load case and apply a load to our beam in the shear Y direction. Now I'm going to switch to a wind load case and apply a point load here in the horizontal direction at one of these nodes just to demonstrate here how we can do this. Finally, I'm going to set up a load combination and we can go to load case manager and we could just use a built in building code to get a bunch of load combinations. It's a little overkill for our tutorial. We're just going to set up one custom combination. You can give it whatever name you like here, something descriptive and set up the load factors on our dead load and our wind load. Once we do that, we're going to generate some copies. So I'm drawing a selection box with the shift drag. And I'm going to generate copies of the model and all of the loads and all the load cases in order to have uh, four identical models is my goal. I'm going to set up the spacing such that there's a little bit of space between these models. And there you can see we've quickly generated uh, four almost they are identical models right now and we're going to turn off this grid and I turned off the drawing mode so that I don't accidentally drag my mouse and create a member and we're going to change this frame to a simple beam framing and if I do that I'm going to have to add some supports here because otherwise we're not going to be stable so I'm going to add some rotational supports at the base we'll assume those base supports are fixed for our other two models, we're going to use some sort of bracing. And so again, the beam itself is simply supported at both ends. And model number three is going to be an X braced frame. So I can just draw in the X bracing there. Now you can see that larger circle in the center means that visual analysis is going to automatically split and connect those members. And that's generally a bad idea for X bracing. So I'm going to turn that off. And I'm going to make these braces simply connected, so release the moments at both ends. And I'm also going to change the shape to a little HSS um, rectangular section. More typical of the way we um, model bracing these days, or design bracing. 
In order to do our fourth frame where I want to do chevron bracing, I'm going to turn on this feature called snap points, which allows me without a grid defined to snap to specific places along members as I sketch uh, more of my model. So here my braces already have the right shape and material because they're the same as the last member I created. And now you can see we've got our various types of frames all set up. So we can now compare the results. I'm going to turn off the snap points and I'm going to turn off the picture view. One thing I am going to do is shift click a node and set all of their supports to be restrained out of the plane. That's because we have a 3D analysis going on. So now we can see, we can compare how these various types of frames uh, compare to each other for deflections or moments and shears. And I'm also going to go back and turn on tension only bracing in this X braced frame, just so you can see how that feature works. So when we run an analysis, one of the braces actually got removed because it would have gone into compression. Let's turn off the display shapes and show the moments just so we can again see how these frames are, are carrying loads differently. So we'll turn on the display of the MZ moment and put on frame diagrams and you can there now compare how these frames carry their loads. So that's it for our 2D frame comparison. Just gives you an idea of how you can set up models in visual analysis. Thanks for watching.